I just received a new product that is unbelievable in my opinion. This is the Think Diag 2 by Think Car. And we're going to take this out of the box and I'm going to display this to you. And you're going to be um, probably just as amazed as I am at the capability that this little module will do. This has got the functionality of my $1,600 Autel scan tool. This is full bi-directional. It, it, it's unbelievable what they've, how they've managed to do this. So let's take this thing out of the box. Another nice thing that I like about it, I've already hooked it to my 2016, and we've got this 2011 uh, Silverado in right now, so I'm going to hook it to it just to make sure that it functions as good on 2011 as it did on my 2016 but the nice thing about it is it comes in a case this is what you got you've got this little VCI I guess or module whatever you want to call it you've got a cord the cord is a uh, serial connector up here screws in the case is big enough to where you don't have to disconnect this every time so I like that about it you can put this in the case and wrap that cord up and close it and uh, it, it all fits. Um, nice nice little semi-hard case. Of course, you got your manuals here. You've got a serial number and activation code. So let's get this thing hooked up. Uh, well, just real quick, let me, let me show you here on the phone what you got to do to uh, make this thing work. Okay, you just go to the... Uh, Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Download the Think Diag Plus. There's the what the icon looks like, and that's the terminology. And when you open that up, this is what it should look like. So let me get this hooked to the truck, and I'm going to show you as quick as I can the capability of this uh, little scan tool. Now, what really makes this thing shine is the price. You're not going to get anything close to this that I know of. For this price and another thing that makes it nice is you can just keep this in your glove box or your console everybody's always got their phone and uh, be good to go so let me get this thing hooked up all right so we're here in the truck first thing you can see of course I've got it plugged in down here on the DLC connector and I just usually throw this uh, up it usually doesn't have quite enough cord to reach up on the dash but you can throw it up here and it, it's the cool thing about it is you got lights on both sides power vehicle and input output on either side so I'm just going to throw it right there okay so I'm going to turn the key on uh, turn the AC off and we're just doing all systems diagnostic VIN decoding that you can manually enter your VIN before we even get to that, let me scroll through. Here's all the uh, here's all the cars that it's compatible with. And to download one, uh, we'll download. Uh, do I have Chevrolet yet? Probably do. Yeah, GM Chevrolet Cadillac Buick, sixty-eight megabytes. Um gives you an expiration date get back there dodge I mean about every single car you can think of Chinese Asian European Volvo so pretty much anything you're going to work on is going to be there so we're just going to hit VIN decode we're going to let it decode the VIN This is a 2011 
truck. It is a four-speed automatic, uh, just manual heating. This is a work truck, so it's kind of a base model. It does have cruise control, um, power windows, locks, you know, all that stuff. But it's got about 134,000 miles on it. without trailer brake under 8600 with stability control without Z Z95 package so we'll just do a real quick health report and then we'll go to a system scan just scans all the modules we're gonna do a health report and then we're gonna get into the common functions uh, system selection is where you can just uh, select the individual modules and I'll, I'll go over that now this image that's just a generic image that's not supposed to be an image of the actual vehicle but you're gonna see how nice this is laid out easy to read easy to understand this is a it's a, a real pleasure to actually use this uh, this app It'll tell you what modules are not equipped on this vehicle. This is an all systems scanner. So my truck has 21 modules on it. It's a 2016 Sierra SLT. It, it scans all 21 modules. It's got uh, active test, special functions for all the different modules that have those capabilities built into them. Uh, so it's not just a four systems. It's not just, you know, an, an engine OBD scanner. This is a full manufacturer specific scan tool. And obviously the way they're able to give it to this price. Now when I bought this, it was $160 with a $30 off coupon. So it was $130. And I'm telling you, this has the capability that my $1,600 Autel scanner has. As far as the active test and special functions. I'm going to show you the graphing. And... You'll probably be just as uh, impressed with it as I am. So we have two DTCs. So let's take a look at that. Now you can hit report. In fact, let's just do that. Let's go and hit report. And I'll show you how nice the uh, little report is. There's the... And obviously it is a Chevrolet 2011. Uh, two issues. The issues uh, looks like electronic brake control module so let's go back we're going to go into the brake control module uh, what do we got here powertrain control module indicates traction control system malfunction 242 system disabled information stored in valid data 561 so that's in the brake control module um, of course we can clear those DTCs you got a report you can rescan uh, System scan just goes down through and scans all the modules that's on the vehicle. I'm going to hit pause to that because that's basically the same thing that we just did. Let's go back. System selection allows you to just select which module. It doesn't do a scan yet. It just lists all the modules that can be on this vehicle. And if you want to go into one, you just hit it. And then you got common functions. Uh, brake pad replacement. Now, if you've got an electronic parking brake, you may or may not know that you will not be able to put rear pads on it unless you retract the calipers. And at that point, you can put the pads on it and then you uh, re engage the, the calipers and reset them. And you've got to have a scan tool that's capable of doing it. This has got, this has got that capability. Also, if you replace uh, components within the brake system you've got to be able to bleed through the ABS module this scanner will do it um, electronic throttle reset in fact just to show you well let's do something that you're going to be able to hear of course keys right there you've got the capability of uh, programming key fobs to this truck and the truck itself has got the capability to program its own key so you don't use a scan tool for that um, language change, in, in, uh, engine power balance, gear learning, seat calibration, window calibration. A lot of vehicles now, the uh, auto roll up and roll down. If you replace the window regulator or the window motor, uh, you got to have a scan tool to be able to recalibrate that window 
so that it knows when it's full up and full down. Injector coating. So let's go over here. Let's just go into system selection. We're going to go into uh, the engine control module on this vehicle. Now, this is where the actuation test and special functions are at. So let's just take a look at them first, and then I'm going to get into the uh, live data, and we're going to read some live data, and I'll show you the graphing. Um, so here's uh, some output controls that you can do. Air, condi air conditioning relay, cooling fan. In fact, let's see if we can just kick the fan on. Hopefully you'll be able to hear it. Can you hear that? Let me turn it off. It is now off. We'll do all... I don't know how many fans this truck's got, but... I know you can hear that. So there's the fan relay. What else? Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to hear the fuel pump. But we'll give it a shot. Turn key on, engine off. It is. Now I can hear the fuel pump. It just kicked off by itself. It ran for about two or three seconds. Then we go to the off state. We'll kick it on again. I don't know if you heard that. What else? Our control starter relay. I know you'll hear that. So I mean guys, 160 bucks, $30 off, 130 bucks, and you've got this professional level functions. Man, that's that's unbelievable. Now that was that was just one part of the engine control module. You've got engine sweep, you got throttle position. Um, our engine speed control, throttle sweep, and throttle position. So if you change the throttle body or clean your throttle body, you can reset it. Fuel system, cylinder power balance, fuel injector balance, fuel trim enable, misfire graphic. You can select whichever cylinders and then go into the uh, misfire data, service bay test. Now let's go to special functions. There's crankshaft position learn, O2 sensor, idle learn reset, oil life reset. So oil life, uh, let's just go into that real quick. So right there it tells you 96% is where it's sitting right now. I'm getting ready to change the ECM on this, uh, in, uh, on this truck. And I'm going to have to set that back to what it says here, which is in the original ECM, so that the new ECM will be accurate as far as when the oil needs to be changed. Let's hit cancel that. Uh, let's go into a different, well, let's go into some live data, and then we'll go into another module, maybe the body control module. Uh, read data stream is what we want there. And you know what? Let's just go over here. We want something that's going to move because I want to show you the graphing abilities. This is the truck that uh, we're having throttle body issues with. And you know what? I'm gonna I wanna put uh, right here accelerator pedal positions, and we also are gonna put in here the throttle. Yeah, this right here. We're gonna put uh, throttle position sensor one, throttle position sensor two. We're gonna hit OK to those. So right there, you've got a nice easy to read layout. I'm going to go ahead and put the pedal down. Be able to see those change. Now watch this. There's the graphing. I'm put my foot down. Do it a couple times. I mean it's nice and responsive. Of course, you can combine. Uh, we're not going to combine all of them. We'll just combine just the throttle position sensors because this is kind of a cool deal. The way this truck works, one throttle position sensor goes high, the other one goes low whenever the throttle plate moves. So right now, my foot's off the gas pedal. I'm going to put my foot down. We should see basically a mirror image of each other. I'm going to let off. I'll go down about halfway. 
a little bit more. Get out of here, mosquito. I mean, look at that. Puts back off the gas pedal. Very useful, very easy to see graphing. And let's see, just, just for fun, we'll do the throttle pedal. Well, this is the accelerator pedal position sensors. You got two of them, they work a little different. Uh, one's a little lower voltage than the other one, but they do they do both move in the same direction. Uh, but one's 50% less than the other one. So right now, we're at about uh, almost half a volt, 0.47 volt on uh, position sensor 2, and we're at 0.94 volt on position sensor 1. I'm just going to put the pedal down slowly to the floor. And what you'll see there is now we're at 4.14 for number 1 and right at half that 2.06 for number 2. I'll let off. I don't know if it will auto... Okay, no, it does not auto uh, rotate. So you're in a vertical mode, it looks like, uh, all the time. Of course, you are on your phone. It is a phone dedicated app. Now, the nice thing about this, if you have a nice 11 inch tablet, you know, an iPad or a Samsung, or not even a Samsung, but an Android, uh, you, you can download this app to that also. And instead of looking at this on your phone, now you've got a nice 11 inch tablet scan tool fully functional scan tool, bi-directional scan tool. Uh, and then of course if you just want to see a graph individually, you just hit the little graph, uh, you know, icons right there, whatever you want to call them. You can record, uh, hopefully you saw that. Let me go back, so you, we're just going to hit select all. So I just wanted to show you, you got report, then you got record down here in the lower corner. So you can record, uh, you know, all the information. So let's just go into, real quick, I'm going to show you another module. We'll just go body control modules, another module that there's a lot of, that generally there's a lot of uh, special functions and active test in the body control module. Actuation test. So, so here's the actuation test. Um, okay, all the uh, left rear door window. We don't have rear doors on this truck, so none of that's going to be applicable. Uh, electric power management, generator regulator set point exterior lighting most miscellaneous let's just see if the horn honks there you go it will definitely honk the horn we already did the crank we know the st that it will control the uh, starter how about re uh, wiper relay Stopped them halfway in the middle, but um, there's the wipers, wiper wash motor. I don't know if he's got any. Yep, there's the water. So now let's go into special functions setup, sensing, diagnostic module, primary key, and body control module. There's HVAC, passenger presence, radio. Anyway, I mean, guys, if you want a professional level scan tool that's got not only just your OBD2 required data PIDs, this has got manufacturer specific. In fact, I, I guess I ought to show you that. Um, so I'm going to do system selection. Oh, I'm sorry, that was system scan, wasn't it? System selection. ECM uh, data stream. We're just going to do engine data. We're going to select all. Now, on this GM, it's actually not the best vehicle to show you because GM's got their engine data broken up into groups of data. And I'll show you what I mean by that. But right here is everything. The, if, if you look at the data PIDs here, I'm going to just kind of slowly scroll through it. These are manufacturer-specific data PIDs, meaning 
the EPA mandates that OBD2 protocol display a certain amount of data pits. So every single manufacturer from 1996 under the OBD2 format or pr uh, protocol has to display a certain amount of data pits. Your O2 sensors, uh, your e some EVAP p data pits, I think, you know, just your typical engine temperature, intake air temp, stuff like that, barometric pressure. And then you've got your manufacturer specific data pits that goes beyond that. So, you know, I'm just going to scroll through. Now, this is just the engine. Whenever you click on engine under these GMs, you'll see, uh, you know, some of the manufacturer specific. For, in for instance, reduced engine power history. So that's not a OBD2 required data pad, but it's here. Okay, so there's under and what I mean by the different groups that GM puts these under. You got engine. All these are going to be engine related, but you got engine data. You got uh, automatic transmission. Uh, here's your throttle actuator data pads. Select all them. Go to OK, and I'll just scroll through. So this is still engine related data pads, but it's this is data pads that they grouped together for throttle uh, relationships. Anything that's in the ECM that's related to like troubleshooting or looking at the throttle uh, position or throttle related data, this is it. Hopefully all that made sense. Mass airflow. And some of these, like you see right here, reduced engine power history, that was on the other, other one also. But some of these others, you know, was not but as you can see this is a manufacturer specific list of data pits you know if you want to just look at O2 sensor data anything related to O2 sensors on this vehicle on this truck is going to be is going to be listed here now now that we've kind of looked at that, and obviously you're probably already saying yourself, like I did, this is unbelievable that this price level of a scan tool is capable of displaying all this. Let's get back into, or let's go back all the way. We're going to back out of, we are going to end that. So you've got maintenance functions. Of course, the first thing I clicked up here was all systems diagnostic. you got maintenance functions. Here's all your different, you know, if you download the the what they call the bleed, then you're going to be able to bleed bleed the brakes, bleed the ABS system uh, on pretty much any car. That that module and it's free. You just hit download it. Downloads. I just don't want to clog up my phone with a bunch of different uh, downloads that uh, I may or may not need. Uh, oil, you know, TPM, TPMS, EGR, you know, whatever you want to download, you can download them all, or you can pick and choose. OBD functions. So it does have your regular generic OBD uh, protocol. So we'll let it load up here. And there it is. Gives the VIN, mill status, DTCs and DCU. Uh, readiness completed is four. Readiness not completed is three. And that's probably because I did I clear some codes. Oh. oh. Yeah, this truck has not been driven very much since the uh, reduced engine power problem has popped up. Uh, anyway, so there's that. And you can you can click on those and get deeper into it. There's reports. So we'll just show you the reports. Here's uh, this truck. There's my, no, that thing that's still, yeah, there's my Sierra. It's the only two vehicles I've had it hooked to so far. Of course, you got history. Here's where you would, uh, when the software expires, unfortunately, this is not a free update tool to where every year you're going to get free updates. Uh, I don't know what the cost of the update is going to be. I've looked through here. I can't really find anything that says when the software expires, how much it's going to cost you. Uh, but the tool itself for a full year's worth is $130. So 
So I can't imagine it costing any more than that to keep it going. If it even if it costs 130 a year, that's well worth it to get the kind of functionality that you get with this tool. Uh, and you've got a like a bulletin board system here. Um, you know, if you're not sure what you need to do to do a, a procedure or something, then you know you can post here on this board and maybe get some help. Uh, and then you've got some quick think car, uh, you know, service and help, interactive message, notice, online service. And then here's where your uh, uh, your profile is, I guess. Of course, you got to make an account with Think Tool. And every time you use this, it, it logs into that account to verify that you are uh, registered the tool and that it's not expired and all that stuff. So, of course, there's the device should pop up there reports my orders it's got the firmware fix that all all these scan tools seem to have contact us so i mean i don't know pretty nice just wanted to give it a quick video i know i say quick this video's got a lot longer than i thought it was than i thought it would but i needed to show the level of functionality and active tests and stuff this thing's capable of uh, everything that I checked on my truck on my 2016 uh, Sierra worked like a champ and so far as you saw on this truck uh, 2011 Silverado everything's worked like a champ as far as being able to control you know the the components anyway I'm done uh, I'll put a link to this if you're interested this would be the ultimate tool to, to have in your glove box that way if you're, if you're out on the road uh, you can uh, always have a nice scan tool rely on. Anyway, you guys take care. We'll talk to you later. Guys, I've got this pulled up on my iPad. Uh, I think this is, I can't remember which iPad this is, but I think it's a 10 inch screen maybe. And I just want to go through and show you what's nice about this scanner and how much nicer it is on a nice big uh, iPad. Or a nice big screen. I'll show you where this, where I think this would shine to be able to have it on a, have the option to put it on a big screen like this. That's that's one thing you got to keep in mind is that not only is this for a phone, but you have the option to put it on however big of a screen, you know, an iPad or a Android device has. What I want to do here is just show you this would be the nice thing about it as far as not only just reading live data. But when you're planning on doing some graphing, and what I'm going to do is get in, and I'm just going to, we're going to hit the graph here, and I'm going to get in and hit the accelerator pedal. I mean, look how nice that is. To be able to sit there and watch a graph on something this size. And what I don't know. Yes, look at that. So you got pinch control, I think is what they call that. Of course, you got you can record. got the record down there anyway I just wanted to show you know what's nice about being able to put it up on a on a bigger screen so this video is done uh, you know something to keep in mind anyway we'll talk to you later you guys take care